In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, Scripture says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am with you. That has a little more understanding for us today. We gather in his name. We think of those who are sick and afraid, maybe, to come to church this morning. We gather all those who are in their homes, isolated, because of the virus. We gather into God's house, safe and please God, well and healthy. We gather into his presence, the one who wants to be with us, especially in these difficult times. As we begin our Mass, we always tell God we're sorry for our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us this very day. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Remember, Ramas day, Peggy Burke. We pray for her soul that enjoys the happiness of heaven. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the scroll of Exodus. The people were very thirsty, and they complained to Moses. They said to him, Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Did you bring us here so that we, our children, and our cattle would die of thirst? Moses prayed to the Lord, What can I do with these people? Soon they will kill me. The Lord said to Moses, Take some of the leaders of Israel with you. Stand in front of your people. Take the stick you used before in the river. Go, and I will stand with you on the rock of Horeb. Hit the rock with your stick, and water will flow from the rock. Then people can drink the water. Moses did as the Lord told him to do. All the people saw Moses hit the rock. The place was named Massa and Meribah, because that is the place where the people of Israel grumbled and said, Is the Lord really with us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm. Today we will listen to God's voice. Today we will listen to God's voice. 
Come, let us praise and thank the Lord. Let us sing with joy because God saves us. Come, let us bow and worship him. Because he created us, he is our God. Today we will listen to God's voice. Listen to God. Do not make your hearts hard like the people of long ago in the desert. They saw God's work. Today we will listen to God's voice. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, God judge us to be good. Because of our faith in Jesus, we have the peace with God. Jesus stayed for two days. And we received God's grace. And because of this grace, we can work forward to God's glory. This hope is not false because God gives us love through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God. Christ, at the height, at the right time, died for us sinners while we were still lost. It's not easy to die for another person, even for a good person. But if a person is very good, someone might be ready to die for that good person. Christ died for us when we were still sinners, and this proves God really loves us. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Gospel acclamation. Glory to you, O Christ. You are the word of God. Lord, you saved the world. Give me the living water so that I will never be thirsty. Glory to you, O Christ. You are the Word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In Samaria, Jesus went to the town, the town near to the village of Jacob, gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well is there. Jesus was tired by the journey, so he sat down next to the well. It was about noontime. A Samaritan woman came to the well to get some water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The disciples of Jesus had gone to the town to buy some food. The Samaritan woman was surprised and said, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. You want me to give you a drink. Jews are not friends with Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you really knew what God has given you, and if you knew who I am that ask you for a drink, you would quickly asked me for a drink and I would have given you living water. The woman said, you have no bucket and the well is deep. How would you get this living water? Our father Jacob, a long time ago, gave us this well. He drank from this well himself. Also, his sons and his animals drank from this well. Are you more important than Jacob? Jesus said, Any person that drinks this water will be thirsty again. But if any person drinks the water that I give, that person will never be thirsty again. The water that I give will become like a spring of water flowing inside the person. That water will give eternal life. The woman said, Sir, give me that living water so that I may never be thirsty again. 
and never have to come here to get more water from the well. Many of the Samaritan people in the town believed in Jesus. They believed of what the woman had told them about Jesus. So when the Samaritan people saw Jesus, they asked him to stay with them. Jesus stayed for two more days, and more people believed because of the things Jesus said. The people said to the woman, At first we believe because of all you told us about Jesus, but now we believe in Jesus because of the many things he told us. We know that he is really the one that was to save the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few minutes. Hope, Spirit and Truth. Three words that come out of our readings of our Mass on this, the third Sunday of Lent. Hope, Spirit and Truth. Let us take these words because we need these words particularly at this time. We need hope, we need the Spirit within us, and we need truth within us. Yesterday I was thinking about this virus that we're all having to face, our fears, our concerns, sickness and potential deaths, and so on. I was reflecting on the necessity of cleanliness, and I was amused to myself to think that we're now being asked to wash our hands as we sing happy birthday. So I thought to myself, maybe I should get half the congregation to sing happy birthday and maybe the other half the congregation to say the Our Father and see which lasts out the best. I tease, I jest. We need most certainly hope, spirit and truth, but we most certainly need prayer. Indeed, this might be one of the last Masses we might be allowed to celebrate together as we wait on the day-to-day information from health and from our church of what happens next. So I offer you, instead of singing Happy Birthday when you wash your hands, why don't I invite you to pray, to take a particular prayer because we're going to need it. We're going to need an awareness that God is with us through our prayer especially in our difficult times. We have to have his hope, we have to have the Holy Spirit within each one of us, and we have to have that truth. We always need God. The Samaritan woman and Jesus, that conversation, simple and humble conversation, someone brought to the reality that Jesus is the one the saviour of the world. Again, we might reflect on that. We think our world possibly is coming to an end. There's so much disease. There's so much problems at the minute. And nobody really knows what's happening. But as we say in simplicity, God knows. God knows. God knows. We take the wisdom of our readings today. The simplicity of the Old Testament, a God wishing to be close to his people, it's still true. The second reading reminds us of how we might live and die. The life and the death and resurrection of Jesus is the pattern of all our lives. Let us be close to the Lord. When we're close to the Lord, we're close to the Father. When we're close to the Lord and close to the Father, The Spirit lives within each of us, and we will never, ever, ever be thirsty. Let us stand and pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We make our prayers. During this time of Lent, a time of renewal, let us pray to the Lord. With water and the Holy Spirit, may we with confidence come in and through his name. We pray for our church, that all Christians appreciate the value of their calling in life of grace, which Jesus Christ brings us through his suffering death and resurrection. Lord, hear us. And we pray for governments all over the world. Let them be truly so guided by Christian principles, especially at this time, where they might think of life rather than money or business. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are sick throughout our world, our universal church, our world. We pray for those who are sick at this time. We pray for healing for them. And we remember those who care for them in gratitude as they offer their skills and their lives. Lord, hear us. And we remember our dead, our loved ones. We pray for them. We pray that they enjoy the happiness of heaven. We remember especially Peggy Burke. Lord, hear us. Lord our God, with hope, truth, and spirit in our lives, we come to you with our needs and the needs of the world. We pray your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for the Sunday collection. I have some very important announcements to make this morning. I ask for your full attention, please. We have directives from the diocese down in Connor, which have been supported by public health advice. The current situation, the faithful are dispensed from their Sunday obligation, not just for Sunday, but also for holy days. We are very blessed, and we remember those who are watching our Mass today, the deaf community and our hearing community, and those of our parish and beyond. We're very blessed to have that opportunity. Masses will continue until further notice. There are some significant changes. For example, the celebration of Confirmation, First Confession, and First Holy Communion have been postponed. Weddings will continue until further notice. Baptisms will continue until further notice. Funerals will also continue until further notice. Our church is open. We're very blessed to have our church open from 9 o'clock in the morning right through to 7 o'clock in the evening. That is open for personal prayer. Any unimportant meetings, and that's a lovely thing for to the ears of a priest, because all meetings are important, but they're not really. So they can be cancelled if necessary. So let us listen, let us make ourselves aware of the current situation, and there will be further information from the public health 
and of course from our diocese. Don't be afraid to look at your website. Anything that comes new to us is on your parish website. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with the sacrificial offerings, and grant that we, we beseech your pardon for our own sins, may take care to forgive others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created a gift of faith within her. And so ardently did she thirst for her faith that enkindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and gave it thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Peggy, whom you have called from this world to yourself, grant that she and all who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. We stand, brothers and sisters, in Christ. We pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With a simple bow to each other, we say to each other, peace be with you. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those 
called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
as we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished by still on earth with the bread that comes from on high. We humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us, the mystery may come true in completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, not happy birthday, but a prayer as we're cleaning our hands this week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.